Hello. Hey, y'all. All right, so I guess we are live. I wonder if I'm audible. Hello. Okay, so the mic's working. So we have around 15 viewers right now. So I just want to know from y'all that I'm audible. Am I audible? Can you guys hear me? So you have the live chat section open. You can type anything you want, anytime, any queries. You can put it down there. All right. Hey, Matthias. Hello, Monami. Hello, Kyra. Mr. Wise, Mike is good. Great. All right. Awesome. So, hello, what's up, peeps? This is the Geek Guide is back again with another video, but this time we are live. This is our very first live session, and and this is free. So, you no, know, I would really appreciate if uh, you know if you like if you like the effort, if you appreciate the effort. So. You know, if you want to support me, you can anytime. You can go ahead and um, you can go to my homepage. You can you know you can buy me a coffee. You want to support me, and you can go to that page. You can donate me a coffee if you want. It's completely up to you. But yeah, I really appreciate it. So anyway, so what is today's video going to be about? Before I start off with anything, uh, I'm just going to pay my respect and condol. Condolences to all the lives lost exactly 11 years ago today in the tragic attack of September 11. Yeah, so so this session uh, is about creating dramatic cinematic lighting effect, adding that kind of effect to your artwork. So if my screen is visible, I hope my screen is visible. So I just um going to share some images so when i say cinematic or dramatic lighting makeover this is what i mean okay so you have a normal image like this and you can make it look like this something like this okay you can add certain kind of dramatic certain kind of exaggerated lighting effects on it you can paint that in with some effects and brushing and you can create a mood and look and feel like this. And this is uh, with an environment or a background. The same can be applied to portraits or characters. So we have uh, a beautiful illustration of a portrait like this, and you can present it in other ways as well. Like, for example, like this, you can add a very dramatic lighting on the face. This is just one way of doing it. This is another way. and well, here's another way. Well, three different options in which you can present your artworks and images, photographs, whatever. So there are so many ways in which you can present your artworks in a dramatic way to make them look more interesting, to, to create a sense of storytelling and drama and create a sense of mystery. Just overall make them look more interesting and not just, you know, something that everybody does. Okay. So that's what today's session is going to be about. So I already, the images that I showed right now, I have already made very detailed tutorial on those things. So if you go to my channel, there is a video called, you know, at the top, how to paint dramatic lighting on your portraits. So you can go ahead and check that video out. It's, it traces all the steps, step-by-step -step detail technique of how I did it. And it's very easy. It's a very simple trick. And there's also on the background that I showed at the beginning, there's a video on that as well. This one right here, add cinematic drama to your art with this simple technique. And there are more videos on it. But today we're doing it live. I'm doing a live demonstration of this technique. 
so that you know you guys can check it out live you can ask me questions in the in the chat box and yeah all right so before we start uh, some questions before i just go into you know, head over to photoshop uh, let me see if anybody any of you have any questions so rip jaws uh, you want suggestions for display graphic tablets okay display tablets mm, i personally use wacom cintiq 13 hd for uh, and i also use 16 hd for my uh for my uh the studio i work in so there i use a 16 hd and for my personal works i use a 13 hd because it's very easy to carry around and it's very handy so but i do recommend if you're going for a display tab and you have a decent budget definitely go for wacom cintiq right they are the best i mean they are a bit expensive compared to the other competitors like huion canvas or xp pen artist and so on they are uh, wacom is slightly more expensive compared to them but as for a reason they are really premium and good quality you can tell the difference if you use them back to back you can easily you know tell the difference that yeah they are really good the build quality the sensitivity everything is just top notch in wacom tablet but if your budget is not as high as something like you know something that you know uh, that high so you can go for xp pen or you can go for um huion canvas so recently a couple of months back i tried my hands on huion canvas and they have really upped their game compared to a few years back all right i mean you know a few years back canvas wasn't that good but the one i tried my hands on a couple of months back that was really good the experience was very close to that of wacom cintiq and that uh, i think it cost somewhere around 40k 40k indian rupees so well i i know that it it was a very good experience while i used it but i don't know about like the longevity of it like uh, if i if i use it for like one or two years how it's going to perform and so on my cintiq has given me solid performance for the last um five six i think seven years of like you know, around five years it's given me a, you know solid solid performance so i don't know if huion or uh, xp pen will do the same i guess time will tell but experience wise it was good okay huion canvas was good and so it's it's a tough call you know between huion canvas and xp pen artist uh 16 they all uh, fall around uh, within the same range you know the 35 to 40k inr so you just have to compare them and yeah i i can't give you a solid suggestion about that in that range but you know that's where you should be looking at xp pen or we on canvas right so so uh kira or kyra you said uh use the tab to, uh, screen since you don't have budget for wacom uh so matthias you're looking for suggestions so you only use mouse uh actually this tutorial this tutorial will apply if you're using a mouse so yeah you, you can actually create this effect easy because this doesn't uh, involve a whole lot of painting what i'm using right now so you can actually create it to a great extent using a mouse all right um rib jaws uh, last question okay uh live tutorial on making background so that you follow along all right so definitely you know since i have started taking live sessions from now yep uh live background tutorials are on my checklist definitely um yeah so yeah you can expect that in the coming in the near future being able to draw with mouse is cool well uh i can't draw with a mouse so but what i'm gonna do today is not uh, it doesn't involve a whole lot of drawing very minimal drawing so you can achieve that with a mouse 
But if you want, if you tell me to draw an entire background with complex architecture and design with a mouse, well, I'll just, you know, yeah, not for me. Not everybody can do it. I'm not that talented that I can do something like that with a mouse. It's very difficult. I'm just, you know, I'd rather go for the cheapest pen tablet that's available for uh, $50 or, you know, 50 to $100, the cheapest tablet. You know, I would just save up and go for that instead of drawing with a mouse. And what's the point? I mean, if you're a painter, you like painting, you like the flow, you, you, you like the feel of having a pencil on paper, why do it with a mouse? Just, you know, save up for a while, try to go for the cheapest pen tab out there. There are so many out there. And slowly, progressively, you know, go for a display tab sometime in somewhere in the future. Okay, so enough chit chat. Um, it's time to head into Photoshop. So, yeah. So since I uh, already showed some of the examples of what the dramatic lighting effect that I talked about, so we're going to do a live demo of that. So we're going to try that on this image. You can see, I hope there's not a whole lot of lag. I hope the audio and the, the uh, screen cap or the video are in sync. So if you see this image right here, it is generated using mid journey. Okay, this is not an actual artwork done by anybody. It is generated using mid-journey. Now that, that's crazy, right? It's crazy what these new AI thingies are, are capable of doing. Uh, I recently, uh, I'm recently doing a series on AI art actually because it is really going crazy. I made a video on um, how to generate really cool concept art, background concept arts using AI, but not mid-journey. You can do it with NVIDIA Canvas or NVIDIA Gauguin. It is uh, available. You can check out this tutorial, create amazing landscapes using AI art uh, and using Gauguin. It's all free. It's online. You don't need to download any software or anything. Just go to their website. The link is in this video in the description and just put in some very basic prompts. You can do it with a mouse as well. That's how basic it is. And it generates crazy and amazing results. And you can do just very slight. It depends on, it depends on you, like how much photo bash you want to do, but you can do very slight paint over and editing on top of it. And you can get amazing results, right? Like this. So I made a completely separate dedicated video on how you can take those results those uh, outputs given by AI and you can paint on paint in Photoshop with a photo bashing and get gorgeous outputs. You can check out this video if you want to know how you can do that. So this technology has been out there for first uh, the last couple of years, but what mid journey is doing now, it's, it's mind effing blowing and it's crazy. So yeah, so this image has been generated using mid journey. And we are going to apply that dramatic lighting effect on this image or this portrait. That's going to be the first part of today's session. And the second part is going to be the same thing. We're going to apply that on a background. That is this image. It's an image of a good old plain boring uh, street. Nothing crazy about it. Nothing too interesting. It's a very flat lighting, overcast, diffuse light. Not a lot of drama, go drama going on in it. So we're going to create that drama. We're going to make it tell story, make it look more interesting. Okay. That's going to be the second part of today's session. And this is the first part. So let us begin. Any last questions? Um, okay. I'm going to have a look at all these um, uh, chat box and, you know, some, maybe after I'm done with the first, um, first part of the session and if there are any questions i'm gonna go through them and hopefully try to answer as many of them as i can so heading back into photoshop let's do this so we have this image of this portrait needs to stay hydrated guys okay so the goal here is to create a shadow pass and a highlight pass, okay? So 
I'm going to start off by unlocking this layer. You now it's locked. You have this uh, lock symbol. You're just going to click on it and it unlocks the layer. Now it's normal layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate of this layer. So if you are new to Photoshop, if you are a beginner and you're not familiar with all the different uh, uh, shortcuts here and there, so this might be handy, this might be useful for you. So almost any function in Photoshop can be performed in many different ways. Like there are mul multiple different ways in which you can perform a certain task in Photoshop and that's our like, uh, other, other mm, similar uh, digital painting tools which is what makes it interesting. There's no fixed way, you know, you are free to choose your way, whichever way you're more comfortable with, you can go with that. So to duplicate a layer, there are so many ways there. Are, I'm going to show three, okay? So one way is to right click on this, right click on the layer, go to the top and you have a duplicate layer. You can click on that, press okay, and it'll make a copy like this. That's one way. Other way is using the keyboard shortcut Control plus J. So I'll press Control plus J on my keyboard and boom, you have the duplicate. Another way is you can press Alt on your keyboard, click on that layer, drag it up, leave it, and it'll create a copy. So three different ways that I showed for creating a duplicate of any layer. Okay, so you can pick whichever whichever one you you find easy, more comfortable. You can go with that, right? So so I'll create a duplicate of this layer once again, Control plus J. So I have two copies, rather, yeah, I have two copies of the same image. So the first one on top is going to be our shadow pass and the one on the bottom is going to be our light pass. So I'll just rename them, okay, just for you know, our convenience, shadow. And the one below as light. So as the name suggests, Shadow is going to be darker, light is going to be lighter. So just for reference, you know, I'm going to make another duplicate, another copy, right? Is, and uh, I'm going to call it ref, or reference and I'm going to hide it. We, this is going to come handy at the end of the video when we will compare the results. We'll compare, compare this ref image with our final output and we'll see the difference, uh, what we have been able to achieve in terms of creating that kind of lighting and mood. Okay, so shadow is going to be dark and it's not just going to be dark, it's going to be darker, it's going to be more desaturated, and it's going to be slightly bluish because we're talking about exaggeration and adding more drama. So first of all, I'm going to start with levels adjustment. So I'll press Control L on my keyboard and it'll bring up the levels adjustment panel. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come to this input level area and I'll click on this middle slider and you know drag it to the right and you can see that image gets darker if you push it all the way to the right it gets really dark and then it just gets lost in darkness you don't want that dark not going to push it somewhere around here and then the leftmost slider also i'm going to push it slightly to the right and finally if you come all the way down to output levels and go to the right you have this slider around the white part of the label. If you push it all the way to the black, all the way to the left, it becomes completely black. We don't want that. So I'm gonna push it slightly back like this, around 200, right? And I'm gonna press okay. You can, if you want, you can check the preview, you can uh, check or uncheck this preview option. You can see the difference. Right, so I think it's fine. Press OK. So you have the shadow pass now, but it's not enough. You know, it is dark, all right, but it still has a lot of bright saturated colors. For example, this red and the yellows here and there, they are very bright. So we're going to take those colors out of those areas. Or in other words, we're going to desaturate this image. I'll press Control U on my keyboard. Control U and it'll bring out the hue saturation panel. So in the middle, you have saturation. So I'm gonna push it slightly to the left. If you push it all the way to the left, the image becomes grayscale or black and white. We don't want that, it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. So I'll drag it to the left to somewhere around 30, 31, 
press OK, and yeah, we desaturate the image slightly. The next step is to make it a bit cooler. Now, what I mean by cooler is that the colors are going to be cooler or you know, cooler temperature, the opposite of warm, basically, or bluish. So I'll press Control B on my keyboard. Control B brings up color balance. So from here, I'm going to make the image more bluish or cooler, cooler tones. So I'm going to push the slider a bit towards cyan and then a bit towards blue. That way you're going to get some cool bluish tones in your scene. And then I'll press OK. So now we have the shadow pass. Now this is what I'm happy with. It's darker, it's more desaturated, and it's more bluish or cooler. So we have the ideal uh, shadow pass. Next up is the highlight pass. Now the highlight pass, the basic light, that basic image that we have is already bright compared to what we created. I'm gonna make it slightly brighter. So I'll press Control E L on the keyboard. I'll push the middle slider a bit towards the left and the rightmost a bit towards the left, just slightly. Press OK, and then I'm going to make it a bit warmer. So I'll press Control B on my keyboard to bring up the color balance. I'll push it a bit towards yellow and a bit towards red. And then press OK. You can see the difference if I compare it with the ref. So we made it a bit brighter and more, sa more um, you know, more warmer colors. So this is our light pass and this is our shadow pass. Okay. So I hope uh, things are clear till now, so far. All right, no new questions, great. I hope it's all clear so far. All right, heading back into Photoshop. So next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some light on that face. So imagine that there is a light source somewhere you know, outside of our current frame. Now there's like a sun out there. Let me just take a hard brush and a yellow color to explain it. So maybe there's a sun somewhere out there, you know, outside of the frame. And maybe there is a window like this. And then inside there's a room and this lady is sitting in the room and it's a very dark room. Okay. Not a whole lot of uh, the light is there. It's a dark and dingy room. That's why it's looking so, you know, dark and moody, depressing, bluish, desaturated, dark, all the things that we just did. And the sun, because of the sun, uh, let me just bring the room down just slightly like this, okay? And, and let me just uh, take the window slightly down like this. So, the sunlight is entering the room through this window like this. The window is the gateway for the sunlight coming into the room, all right? But imagine that this window is very small or maybe it's, it's not a window. It's just a tiny slit in, in between something, okay? So the amount of light entering the room is very small, very tiny amount of light is entering. So maybe light comes in through the window and falls just on a specific part of the body, a specific part of the face. It doesn't fall on the entire face or the entire body. It falls only on a certain part of the face, maybe till, you know, maybe somewhere around here or here or somewhere, somewhere like this, somewhere like this or this. Or maybe it's falling through blinds, so it'll create, create stripes like this. Okay, something like that. So, let's say it'll fall on the lower part of the face, like this, right here. Now that's what we're going to create, that's the effect that we're going to create. So, one way of doing that is just erasing the shadow, the slayer, the shadow layer from that area. That's one way of doing it, but it's like, it's, it's a way I don't recommend because it is a very destructive method because you can't go back and undo what you did. 
a few minutes from now because in the next few minutes you will have done like maybe 200 new things and it's impossible to go back all those steps it's very inconvenient so instead of using the erase it tools erase this layer i would suggest that you use a mask it's very easy using a mask it's nothing complicated and if you found it if you find it complicated like me you know uh, at the start of my career i avoided using masks i thought what are these masks and all you know they just make the whole thing look very complicated i mean i like having simple layers i i loved having simple layers like this one two three simple layers and done but masks and adjustment layers and this and that they just make the whole thing look so much more complicated and i, I used to find that scary okay very technical i didn't like it but if you're if you're someone like that who finds masks uh, unnecessarily complicated and all i'm just gonna make it easy for you if you're attending the session right now i'm gonna try my best to make it easy for you masks are simple nothing complicated it's they're very good for you know uh, streamlining a process and making things more easier and convenient rather so the way you can create a mask is if you come all the way down to this area at the bottom of the layer panel you can see this thing this black circle inside a white rectangle you can click on that but make sure that whichever layer you want to create a mask on is selected first so i'm going to create the mask on the shadow layer so i'll make sure that the shadow layer is selected then i'll come down to this mask icon called add layer mask i'll click on it and you'll see that this white additional layer has come up this is the mask so how masks work is that if you paint black on this mask, it acts as an eraser. It is erasing or deleting parts of your image of that, to be more specific, this image. Instead of doing it directly on this image, you're doing it on the mask. And the mask is taking all the damage. And so let me just pick black, okay? Pure black color. And I'll paint on this mask, maybe around here. And as you can see, the layer underneath, that is the light layer, is being you know it's visible now it's like erasing this layer but you're doing that indirectly using the shadow or uh, sorry using the mask so you can erase as much as you want in the mask and you can undo that as many as much as you want by using the opposite of black that is white so white is used for painting things back into the image for example you erase something using black and later on you decide that you're not happy with that so you want to undo that or you want to refine what you did you're going to bring certain parts back into the image so you can select white pure white and you can paint it on that image and what it'll do is it'll unerase whatever you erase or it'll bring back everything just paint it on there and it'll bring it everything back so if i press alt backspace on my keyboard Fill the whole layer with white and everything that I lost while erasing it, all of that is back. So it's as simple as that. You use black color to erase and you use white color to unerase or, you know, get rid of, bring things back. That's how simple it is. So I hope I have been able to uh, clarify the whole shenanigan about uh, erasers or, sorry, layer masks. So with that bad juju out of the way, and now that uh, layer masking is a piece of cake to all of you, let's, let's take a commitment to use layer masks more often in our work, okay? It, it'll just make things easier. It's a more professional attempt because if you are a digital artist and you want to pursue this as a career, then in the future, if you're working for a studio or a company, you might be required to use layer masks because in a, in a part of a team you're not the only one working on the file maybe there will be some somebody else working on your file maybe it's going to be an animator using your psd file to animate it in after effects or other softwares and so on and you need to present your files to them in a certain way that it is easier for them to handle and it's not a mess they shouldn't be tearing their hair over how disorganized your layer is Okay, so something to keep in mind for future. Okay, enough of that. So now it's time to erase. 
Okay, so I will go to this layer, make sure that this layer is selected. Do not make the mistake. If you are selected the main layer and you paint black on it, it'll just paint black on that layer. So you should make sure that the mask is selected in order for the whole thing to work. Okay, so I just selected the layer mask and then I'll go to my brush tool and I will use, I'll pick the soft default soft run brush. It's a magical brush, guys. If you're someone chasing a uh, textured brush, custom brushes and whatnot, that's fine. I have no complaints, but you can achieve a lot using the default soft run brush that Photoshop gives you for free. Okay, you can do a lot with this. It's a crazy powerful brush. Anyway, so I'll select that brush. Uh, opacity can be 100%. Uh, the pressure options can be on. I'll increase the size slightly. It'll be a small size brush, something like this. And then I'll choose the black color and then I'll paint black on this layer to get rid of all the shadow like this. I'll paint it on the face. All right. So that is done. Okay. But is it right? That's the question. Is this correct? The light is really falling like this from the right somewhere from the right side through a window or an opening and it's falling on this face will it look like this that's the question answer is no because this looks flat and the face is not a flat shape it's a 3d shape and it has its volume it has its curves it has its 3 its 3d volume and depth so when the light falls on the face it'll take up that volume It'll take up that volume of the face, which is a complex structure. It has cheeks, which are curvy. Nose, the nose is a more pointier curve. And then the other cheek also has its own curve. So like that, it's going to be a series of curves. So it's not going to fall straight like this. Rather, it will fall in the form of curves. So the, the first cheek is going to be like this. It's going to create that curve. Then for the nose, it's going to create a steeper curve like this, right? And then the other cheek is going to be, again, a bit of curve. Okay. All right, so we painted in the curves. We made sure that the light falls by taking in the shape of the face, the volume. Next step is to bring back some of the shadow because this is not how light works. There should be shadow, right? If the light is falling from the right side, there will be shadow on the left side or cast shadow, especially the nose. So the left side of the nose will be in shadow and there will also be some cast shadow. Same with the lips, same with the left side of the face, this area, okay? So now I will choose white color from the color palette. Increase the brush, brush size just a bit and I will bring back the shadow. Just like I just said, how you can use mask to bring back areas of your paint, areas of your art anytime. So this is the part that might be a bit tricky to achieve with a mouse, but uh, you have to have your patience. So now that we made, made the left side of the nose dark, it's time to paint the cast shadow. It'll be something like this, right? Taking up the form of the face, sorry, of the nose. Cast shadow is done. Next up is the lips. So same with the lips. The lips are also going to have the shadow. On the cheek area. Like this. And then this ring like structure that you have on the right side, maybe some light is falling on that and it'll, it can have some cast shadow on the cheekbone. So let's create that curvy shape.
and finally this part of the face so this comes th this takes us to a scientific term where we you know talk about some scientific terms that is the terminator now what is a terminator i made a separate video on lighting so you can find more details in that the terminator is basically the the junction between shadow and light so here in this phase shadow is falling on the right side and there'll be a bit of uh, a light is falling on the right side and there'll be a bit of shadow on the left side for example this is an ideal example we have highlight on this side and you have shadow on this side so the junction where the light transitions over to the shadow this point of partition is called the terminator and you're going to see the terminator on this part of the face as well and it's going to be a very soft transition so i will choose the soft brush and i'm gonna erase it with a very low opacity brush it's going to be a very gentle transition from light to shadow i'll increase the brush size so the keyboard shortcut for increasing or decreasing the size of your brush is square bracket so open square bracket is for decreasing the size and close square bracket is for increasing the size, okay? That's another keyboard shortcut that you might find very handy. So now I will gently erase the highlight from the left side of the face like this. So you can see how slowly a very realistic and 3d shape of the face is taking up So as you can see, the 3D shape of the face is slowly taking up. Now, now since we now now that we have achieved the gradual transition from shadow to highlight, next step is to apply the same to the cast shadows. Okay. Uh, Hey, so I noticed that uh, I briefly 
connection went down really guys uh, apologies for that uh i i hope it's streaming again am i live so if you're still present in the stream uh am i audible can you see the stream anybody can give me a green signal Okay, hey, is your thanks for the affirmation. All right, so where were we? Okay, so yeah, we were painting some some of the shadow back into the highlight. So yeah, so now that that three D shape is more or less visible, it's trying to apply the same to the cast shadows of the nose and lips and so on. So one thing to keep in mind here is that shadows, well, when they move further and further away from the source of the shadow they tend to get more blurry or softer at the base at the base of or the at the base they're sharper and as further away they go they become more soft so we're gonna paint some white into that with a soft brush where the nose gets a little further away Nose's shadow gets a little further away, like that. Same with the shadow of the lips. Like that. And you can do the same with the smudge tool as well. Take the smudge tool with soft brush. Uh, strength can be somewhere around 40%. And you can smudge the area slightly to so get that. Okay. Different tools, similar effect. All right. Next, what I'm going to do is I am going to give some blur to this uh, mask because the hard shadows appear a bit too hard or a bit, a bit too sharp. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And yeah, I am going to keep the value somewhere around 6 or 5, 5.5 uh, let's keep it at 5.5 I'll press OK so yeah I like the amount of blur that we got so we have a good blend of soft light uh, soft light and hard light now okay so the main job is done the next next part is to add a bit of brightness overall okay so now comes the play of layers or blending modes so i'll take a new layer from right from here click on this we have a new layer and i'll set it to overlay okay and then i'll choose the soft round brush large size i'll make it a bit larger enough almost as large as size of our face and i'll pick an orangish bright orangish yellow color from here and with low opacity i'm going to paint it around the highlight like this like this okay so we have we added some more some brighter intens intensity to this. Next, I'm gonna take another new layer, set it to overlay, and it's time to add some variation to the light. So we have a bit of mostly yellowish light, but we're gonna introduce some secondary color, more warmer reddish tones in these junctions or in the outer edges of the highlight or around the uh, terminator so i'll pick a very strong bright reddish tone and i'll paint that 
along these junctions or terminators, especially along the softer areas like this, where the effect can be seen the most, okay? And you can see the difference, I believe, that added variation of color really gives it a different mood altogether. So if I turn it off, you can see, it's without that effect and now it's with. And yeah, that's a lot of difference actually. If you want, you can change the colors. You can press Control U and you can move it around to see you know, how it looks with a bit orangish, more pinkish tone. They all have their own effect really. So you feel free to go with whichever you like. Okay, so that creates a difference, right? Yeah. So next step is to create some reflected light. So why reflected light? light? Why isn't this enough? Well, so all that bright light falling on the face is being reflected back onto other areas. Okay, for example, just below the uh, eyebrows are surfaces that are facing the reflected light so if i if i were to sort of break it down into shape this is how the shape looks really so as you can see there's a bit of bulge on this surface it's facing towards this so the light that is being reflected is hitting all those areas. So these areas and these areas will receive some sort of reflected light from there, okay? So I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay. I'll pick my soft round brush, keep the opacity somewhere around 10, 20%, increase the brush size slightly and choose a warm yellowish color, a bit orangish. And then I'll paint that over there. And a bit on the right side of the nose. I want to change the colors. Control B, make it, I want to make it more reddish. Okay, so I want to decrease or you know, erase parts of it. Just slightly. I want to increase the intensity in certain areas, make them brighter, like that. So now you have some good old reflected light falling in, the, in those areas. And we can add some highlight on the lips. Okay, so I'll choose bright yellow or bright white and paint that on the lips. We have some nice reflection on the lips. You can see the difference. Okay. And I feel I can uh, load the intensity of some of the reflected light from this area just slightly. And that seems fine. Okay. And the next step is to add some overall glow or haze around these brighter areas of the image. So I'll take another net layer, set it to hard light. I'll pick the bright yellowish color from the cheek, push it a bit towards white. And with a very low opacity brush, I'll paint that over there so you can see the glow surrounding that area, that dispersion of light, okay? Next up is I'm gonna cast some light on some of the nearby areas. For example, these ornaments are parts of the dress or this ring-like structure. 
they seem like they also might receive a bit of light. So I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay, and with a small size brush and a higher opacity, I'm gonna paint some light on those areas. Okay, there, and slightly on the ornament. Now, there can be a reason behind this, okay? It's all about design. So the entire composition having just one large shape, that is this area on the face, and nothing else to complement that, looks a bit odd. And it's like a composition, composition that's not very balanced. So in order to balance this, this really bright patch of light, you can have some smaller patches of light that are almost equally bright. Okay, so what they'll do is they'll help complement or balance the frame overall. They'll uh, help you achieve more equal weightage. So once that is done, I can add some glow around them. So I'm gonna take a new layer, set it to hard light. So see me using hard light and overlay a lot. So you know that's a part of my process, hard light, overlay, and multiply. Multiply is gonna come very soon. So I'll pick some of those brighter colors, push it towards white, and with very low opacity, I'll paint some glow on those objects. Same with this red ear earring kind of thing. Okay. And on the dress as well. Okay. So we added some glow there. And next step is adding some big net effect. So I'll take a new layer. I'll pick the darkest, one of the nearby darker tones from the edge this color, increase the size, and in normal mode, I'm gonna brush it along the edges. Let's create some sort of vignette effect. Uh, you might ask why? Is this necessary? Why am, why am I doing it? Well, it's not absolutely necessary for you to do it, but the reason is to pull the tension away from all the nearby areas and just more or less focus it on the face or near to the face. Or, you know, leading the tension to where you want the tension to go towards. That's the purpose mainly. Okay. And next, I'm going to take a new layer and I'm going to paint some shadows in certain areas that look a bit flat. For example, the nose. There's a lot of bright light on the right side of the nose, but there's not enough shadow on the left side. So I'll take a new layer, set it to multiply mode, decrease the size of the brush, and I'm going to pick a bluish tone from the middle rose desaturated tone from somewhere in the middle of the palette. And I'll decrease the brush size, keep the opacity low. I'll paint some soft ambient shadow on the left side of the nose. and also some parts of the forehead, mainly the left side that's away from the highlight, parts of the cheek. So yeah, you have a bit more depth now. Once you add that, you can lower the, si lower the opacity just slightly. And yeah, we are more or less done with this piece. Finally, what I'm gonna do is do some adjustments of, for colors. So I uh, can take a uh, adjustment layer at the, at the, in the end. So adjustment layer is a lot like a mask. So we already dealt with our fear of masks. So it's time for the next step that is creating um, an adjustment layer, which is just like a mask. So you can go to this 
half black, half white circle option, click on it and it'll bring up a whole lot of options. You can choose color balance. So remember me using control B for color balance, right? To apply that balance, color balance directly into a layer. But this is like a mask. So instead of applying that effect directly onto a layer, you can do the same using a blending. Uh, you can do it using a adjustment layer. So any effect that you create, you can erase parts of that anytime you want by painting black on top of this white uh, mm, mask. So now I'm going to push the slider slightly towards red and a bit towards pink and a bit towards yellow to create this uh, beautiful orangish mood like this. You can turn it on or off to see. And I'm going to erase the edges by with black color increase the size and with large size brush so i'm going to brush on that on the edges to bring back some of that blue that we had at the start of the video but mostly were you know in the edges so yeah you want to bring some of the blue in the face, also the left side of the face. And paint just a little bit of that blue there. And you have some nice color variation now. So I think this piece is ready. So I'm going to put all of that inside a group. I'm going to select the first layer, go all the way down to this layer, click on it by holding shift on my keyboard and then select all the layers. Then press control G on my keyboard and I'll put it all inside a group. Let's compare with, with this. So this is what we had, and this is what we have now. So that's how you can create the dramatic lighting effect and apply that to your artworks, photos, anything. So I hope that was useful. I hope you found this technique useful and and I hope, uh, you know, it's going to come handy for y'all. So try applying this to your artworks and, uh, you know, see how it looks, how the effect feels, how it can change or give a different uh, effect to your artworks. Right? So, all right. Now, now that we're done with the first part of our video, it's time to proceed to the second part, second part of the session that is applying the same effect to exterior backgrounds, right? This particular street. So it's a very flat, overcast, boring, old street. It doesn't have a lot of interesting things going on in it. So we're going to create that. We're going to create the interest in this. We're going to create the visual drama and appeal and make it tell a story right now. Got to stay hydrated, guys. Okay, so we're going to go a bit faster this time since we already uh, discussed the whole thing in a lot of detail in the first part. So this is going to be relatively a little faster. And I'll expect you guys to catch up with this faster. So I'm going to create a duplicate of this layer and then create shadow pass. I'm going to name the first as reference just for comparing at the end of the video. Then we have the light for the light pass. And I'm going to rename this as shadow for the shadow pass. Okay. So the shadow pass is going to be darker, more desaturated and bluish. So control L on my keyboard to bring up the levels adjustment. Push the middle slider towards the right, push the left slider towards the right, and down at the output levels, push this right slider towards the left, towards the left slider. That's it. Okay. Then I'm going to desaturate it slightly, control U, and the saturation panel is going to go a bit towards the left. Okay. Then it's time to make it cooler or more bluish. Control B on my keyboard, and I'm going to push. Sliders towards cyan and blue. 
get that really depressing bluish colors. Press OK on the keyboard and that's it. The shadow pass is ready. Time for the highlight pass. So control L on my keyboard. Push the sliders towards the left. OK, and control B to make the colors warmer like this. Okay, so the light pass is ready and the shadow pass is ready. It's time to paint some highlight into this using masks. So I will select the shadow layer go all the way down, click on this option to create the layer mask. Make sure that the mask is selected and not this layer. Now that the mask is selected, I will pick my soft round brush Make the opacity 100, keep the pressure options on, choose black color from the color palette, and then paint the light. Now, a bit of discussion here before we start painting the light. Okay, so imagine that there is a sun somewhere off screen behind these buildings on the right side. There's a sun over there. Okay, and the light is falling like this. And it's falling on this building, okay? So when the light will fall on this building, it won't fall on the entire building like this. It won't, not on the entire building. First, the light is going to create some shadow. Shadow of this building. So the shadow of this building is going to fall on the buildings on the left side. And the light is going to fall at the top, wherever the shadow ends. Okay, that's the whole, you know, technicality of this. So let's paint that. I'm going to increase the brush size and let's follow the perspective of these image of these uh, con this the windows and architectural shapes. Let's follow the perspective and paint that line. You're painting black on the mask so that uh, lighter Highlight pass layer underneath is visible. Okay, like this. Once that is done, let's look at the shape. It's too straight. Okay, and that makes it look flat. Will the shadow be this straight? The answer is no, because, well, the buildings on the right side isn't straight. If you look at the top part of the building, the terrace and so on, they have a complex shape in the architecture. They have some towers and whatnot and arches. So the silhouette of those structures will also be visible on this shadow. So let's create that very roughly. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate. So if this part falls on here, so it'll be something like this. So for that, I need to choose the white color now because I'm going to get rid of some of that highlight. So I'm going to paint the shadows back into the frame, right? So like this, maybe a bit of that. Right here. Some of that and fall like this. I don't know the exact structure of this building because it is going off frame, but maybe, no, maybe it has something going on there like that. So now that we have created some complex structure there, Next up, we will be painting, we'll be extending the highlight onto the other parts, that is the sky. So I'll select black again, and let's paint the sky with light. 
I'll just get rid of the shadow from the sky. So if I want to select this sky, I can just come to any of the layers, press W or magic one, magic one, two, and click on this and go back to the mask. And because you have selected the sky very accurately now, I can just paint white on that area. And it'll paint white only on the sky and not on these buildings. So you have a very accurate selection of the sky. And then we are gonna paint the light on the this building as well, assuming that the light is, is falling on there as well. So you can paint the white on this building too, like this. But make sure that not a whole lot of lot of that light is falling or leaking into the right side building or the left side building. You have to be careful about that. So one way of making sure of that is by using the polygon lasso tool. So I'm gonna select the shape of the building on the right side very roughly. There's no need to be too accurate here. Let's make an overall impression of the building's shape. And once you have a close selection, you can very comfortably brush it without worrying about like the light leaking into any part of the scene anywhere. And once, as we come down to the bottom, let's cast some very strong bright light on the street. Okay, like that. I think more we more or less have what we need. I think some light is leaking into this building. So I'm gonna reselect that and fill that with white. Okay. Alright, so now we have a basic structure like where the light is falling and where the shadow is. So Next up is adding some depth because all the light is really making the thing look quite flat as of now. So the whole thing is flat. So we need to put some, we need to paint some uh, highlights. Uh, we need to paint some cast shadows into all that highlight. So I'll pick white color, decrease the brush size and decrease the opacity slightly somewhere around 40. And then it's time to paint some, uh, some, well, cast shadow in certain areas. So parts where I feel can have some cast shadow and be painted with white to get rid of all that highlight from those areas. Because not everything will receive equal amounts of hard light. I'm doing this a bit roughly. Any contours or shapes or arches that is, that's facing against the light can have that um, that shadow here and there. And now it's time for the left building. We have a lot of structures that can have shadow as well.
Okay, I think that is enough for now. So next up is adding some brightness. So I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay, and then I'll pick a bright yellowish orange color and I'll increase the size of the brush using the keyboard shortcut, square bracket, increase opacity slightly and I'll brush it on the upper part of the image and also the middle area. Okay, like that. Cool. Next step is to add that variation of color along the, the terminators. So I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay and pick a bright, strong reddish color and then brush it along these edges of light, wherever the light is transitioning into shadow. This does add a beautiful effect to the image. The variation of color that is. Okay. So that part is done. You can see the difference it makes. It's, it's just visual exaggeration, but as an art piece, it does make it look really cool. All right, then the next step is to create some depth in this area. So I'll take new layer, set it to hard light this time, and I'll pick a very bright orangish yellow color, increase the brush size, and decrease the opacity, and then brush it along this area right on top of the street to create this beautiful hazy glow as if a lot of dust cloud is there and the light is really being dispersed over there, creating a very bright glow like that. Some of it can be up in the sky as well, creating that haze. And then I can create some depth right here, okay? And I can create more depth by showing some rays of light. So I'll take another layer, set it to hard light. And using the polygonal lasso tool, I'm gonna select that area of the building once again. Roughly, there's no need to be too neat. And then again, the bright whitish yellow color, I'm gonna paint some depth or some light rays coming mostly from the right side. Some streaks of light like that. And yeah, we more or less have created that depth Okay, and next step is to add some shadows. So I'll take a new layer, set it to multiply, then I'll create, pick a bluish desaturated color from the middle of the palette, increase the brush size and paint it along the edges, but mainly on the right side. And on the street, a bit of that Net effect. Cool. Finally, it's time to paint some reflection. So when there's such a bright object in front of you, obviously some reflection will fall on the street, especially when the street is made of stone, as you can see, and it does have some reflective properties of it. So I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay, pick a bright yellowish orange color, and with a large size brush, I'll just brush it down the middle of the street like this. So 
get the reflection. And next step is to make the reflection look more realistic. So I'll take I'll take the eraser to could keep the size somewhere around 50, increase the size. And the goal is to erase the highlight from certain rocks that are less that are less reflective. So I'm gonna erase that highlight from some of the rocks, make them look darker or less reflective. Just a few of them. And then increase the highlight in some of the areas. I'll take a new layer, set it to overlay. And once again, with low size brush, increase the brightness of some of the rocks. Increase the opacity. And I can erase it overall from the edges. So that the reflection mostly sticks to the middle of the frame like that. Cool, so we have the reflection, we have everything. Finally, what I'm gonna do is take a new layer or adjustment layer, color balance, just like I showed before, and push the things towards the right, or towards warmer colors. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna erase some of that warmer colors from areas that need to be bluish. So because we need to maintain a bit of you know, complementary colors, some blues, some reds. So that balance of Cooler colors and warmer colors creates a more balanced composition. Painting some of that blue back out. Maybe I can paint it in slightly in some areas. So that transition between the yellow and the blue. And yeah. Maybe finally at the end, I can create a new layer, set it to overlay, pick a orangish yellow color, bright, and paint it on the left side of the building just to create some better highlight like that. And some haze up on the right corner of the buildings. Maybe with hard light. Just the parts where light is sort of peeping in through the openings. Maybe increase the opacity just slightly. And yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna put all of it inside a group and let's compare it the before and after with our reference. So this is what we have before, a very plain flat image of a street. And then we add that added the dramatic lighting makeover to it. 
and this is what we have so yeah before and after and i can pretty much apply this technique to um your artworks to make it look more dramatic and cinematic okay and i'm going to show you just a couple of last moment um post-production techniques if you're still with me some of you guys okay so i'm gonna show you something that's called color lookups you can use it to achieve you try out some other options for boot so you can go down here and click on color lookup and from the 3d lut file you can click on any of these and you can keep going down to show you the different uh, options different variations of colors and moves that you can try try out it's like a filter but except you get a lot of options because each of these filters can be applied in blending mode option also you can apply them in multiple different blending modes to you know that you can get you can achieve like unlimited amounts of uh, options with these so i kind of like this it's cool and lower the opacity slightly maybe this is something you can try other thing is um you can add some noise to the thing if you want so you can fill it with gray you can take a new layer fill it with gray it's good if it's uh, like 50 percent gray and you can go to you can make it overlay blending mode to begin with you go to filter uh noise add noise we can apply some noise to this. Not a lot. So something like this. You can add some noise to it. And leave, decrease the opacity and a bit of noise. Sometimes makes things look more interesting. And finally, the thing is that you can add some chromatic aberration to your art. So you can, if you want, you can take a duplicate copy of your whole image. So control A, select the whole thing. Control Shift C to create a merged copy of the whole image and control V to paste it like this, a duplicate. Then you can go to double click on this thumbnail. It'll bring up the layer styles option you Can go all the way down to advanced blending and you can turn off the R channel. You can just uncheck this and press OK. Then I'll just zoom in slightly and I'll move the image around. You can move it around like this if you want, or you can move it slightly gently with the arrow keys. And you can see the difference. So a bit of chromatic aberration effect in that. And these will bring down the opacity slightly if you want and yeah so i'm going to put it all inside a group once more and check out the difference before and after so before and after so there you have it there's a trick simple and easy nothing too complex so so that's the technique and yeah, it's, it's been a long class, almost one and a half hours. So I hope you found you guys found this video useful. And I hope to see you guys trying out this technique on your artworks in the future. So yeah. Thank you for attending this live, attending this live session. And uh, I hope you guys found this video useful and you learned a thing or two, learned a few techniques. So maybe I'll be doing more of these sessions in the future. Like some of you suggested um, some live background painting sessions would also be nice. So yeah, if, are there any further questions? Let's hear them out. If there's anything, any suggestions, any questions? Get them out. Uh, 
I, I think, yes, uh, the video is definitely going to be available after the live is over as well. I think so. Uh, you can watch it after that. It's uh, hopefully being recorded. So you can check it out as well after the video, uh, after the live stream is uh, has ended. So the, the stream is about to end. Real. There's nothing much for me to say. Just I'm just here for a few more minutes just to accept, uh, just check out a few more questions. If you have any questions or suggestions, let's address those and then we can call it a day. It's been a fun session so far. So thank you for all those who attended this. And again, once again, uh, if you are a subscriber, make sure to uh, hit the like button, share, and yeah, if you're subscribed, if you're not subscribed, do subscribe and please click on the bell icon so that you get notifications of my future uploads because I'm going to do a lot of these uh, live streams in the future, in the coming days. And also there's going to be the regular videos that will be uploaded. So in order to get notifications of my future videos, make sure to click on the bell icon and receive notifications. And if you enjoyed the stream and if you want to support me, you can you know, buy me a coffee. You can go to my homepage and you can go to click on this icon. So you can redirect you to Kofi website. You can you know, donate a coffee to me and that way, you know, it'll, it'll be supporting me and that's a really great help so great gesture anyway so once again before we close off thank you thank you so much for making this live stream a success and let's let's do more of these okay so thank you for being a subscriber thank you for attending the session and being a viewer so Hope to see you guys in the next streams and that's all for now. So see you on the next one. Peace.